In this video, you will learn about the power of lookup tables. This is used to simplify Revit formulas when you have lots of possible options. This lets you import a CSV file created in Excel as a database for parameters in the family. In this example, we have a parameter called VP number. When you change this number, not only will the type of fruit parameter be updated, but also the VX and VY length parameters. This searches for the correct row in the CSV file and return all the values from that row. In a typical workflow, you would have to place a lot of nested if statements. Lookup tables simplify the process. At the bottom right of the screen, you can see a button called Manage Lookup Tables. You can see a list of imported lookup tables in this family. This is the lookup table file once it is opened in Excel. It looks quite similar to a type catalog file. On the left, you can see the name of the fruit. Then you have the unique numbers, followed by the dimensions. Let's try to add a new row. Save the file in the CSV format and import it back into the Revit family. Try to use number 11 for the VP number. You can see that the other parameters are updated to reflect what you have typed in Excel. In this lesson, you will learn how to create a CSV lookup table file. We will use the example of a cocktail Revit family. Always leave cell A1 empty. Type the name of the cocktails in the rest of the A column. Now let's go to cell B1. Here you must type the header's name. This is the format you must use. First enter a name for this column. Then place two hash symbols. Add the type of parameters. There are only a few types you can use, ranging from general, length, volume, and a couple of others. Place two more hash symbols. Finally, type the units. This column will be used for the key that will unlock the values. We call it VP. The type is number, and the units are general. Now let's place a cocktail height parameter. This is the length type, using millimeters as the units. Type in the values. Also, we forgot to type in the values for the VP numbers. Now let's create a cocktail volume header. Enter the values. Let's end with a main ingredient column. Use other for the type of parameter. Leave the units empty. Then fill up the values. Save this file as a CSV. All right, your file is ready. Now you will learn how to use lookup table in the family. First, you need to import the CSV file into a Revit family. Go to the Family Types menu and click on Manage Lookup Tables. Pick the CSV file you have created in the previous lesson. Something important. This is an imported file, not a linked file. That means that once the CSV is imported, you could delete the file and it wouldn't make a difference. It becomes embedded in the Revit family. The next step is to create all necessary parameters. First, we have the cocktail key which is a number parameter. The next is cocktail height, which is a length parameter. Create the cocktail main ingredient, which is a text parameter, followed up by the cocktail name, another text parameter. Let's end with cocktail volume, which is using the volume data type. All the parameters have been created, now it would be more simple to group them all together. Change the grouping so it is under Other. OK, now you are ready to type the lookup table formula. First, you need to type size underscore lookup. Then, type the first parentheses. There are always four values to type in the lookup formula. The first is the lookup table name. This is the name of the CSV file. The second value is the lookup column. This is the value from the CSV that will be used for the parameter. Then, default if not found. If Revit cannot find a value in the CSV, this value will be used instead. Finally, you need to type the key value to search for in the CSV file. This value is always the second column in the file. In this case, it is the VP number column. Okay, here's the formula for the cocktail height parameter. 
The first value is cocktails in between quotation marks, which is the CSV file name. The second value is cocktail height in quotation marks, which is the name of the column you want to display results. The third column is the default value, in case the value is not found in the file. Finally, you must type the cocktail key, which will unlock a specific row in the CSV file. Right now, we get the default value of 10 millimeters. That's because the cocktail key is currently set to zero, which doesn't appear in the CSV file. Try changing the cocktail key. A different row is selected, which updates the value. When we use number two, the cocktail height is changed to 200 millimeters. Okay, now let's add a look of formula for the cocktail main ingredient. The first and last values in the formula are the exact same. Only the second and third values must be updated. Since this is a text parameter, the default value must be in between quotation marks. For the cocktail name, here's a trick you can use. In the CSV file, this is a column without header. Well, you can type two quotation marks and the first column will be used even if there's no header. You can see all the values changing when the cocktail key is modified. Let's add the final parameter, the cocktail volume. All the formulas have been set. We can now modify multiple values by simply changing this number. So far, we've been using examples of fruits and cocktails to talk about lookup tables. Maybe you're wondering what any of this has to do with construction. Well, here's an actual example from a Revit door family. In the CSV file, you can see the key is a text parameter with the frame material. Here, you have the frame thickness value associated to each material. Back in Revit, you can see the formula for the frame thickness. Whenever you change the frame material text value, the thickness is automatically updated. This allows you to use text values as conditions for dimension values, which cannot be done with if statements formulas. Overall, lookup tables are amazing if you have a lot of different options in the same family. A couple of quick things to mention. First, if you've enjoyed this video, it is an excerpt from our Herrick Families course for Revit, which include a lot of intermediate to advanced Revit tips to help you build amazing, helpful and user-friendly Revit families. Secondly, I will be hosting a live masterclass on May 19 at 11 a.m. Eastern. This is exclusive to BIM Pure members. You need to enroll to get access to this session and we'll go even deeper with lookup tables. We'll see many more examples and you'll even learn how to use multiple variables instead of a single one. One of the family will explore during the live masterclass is this structural wood floor system where the dimensions, the width and the height of the beam is controlled by lookup tables. And in this one, you can easily swap between using wood and steel options and the dimensions are automatically adjusted and all the dimensions are controlled with this huge Excel spreadsheet where all of the beams have more than 150 possible dimensions. So if you cannot watch this session live or if you're watching this video from the future, don't worry, you can always catch the replay not only of this event, but of all the past live masterclasses we had on BIMPure. Just enroll now at BIMPure.com to get access to everything.